Hey guys, Thermal here. Today I'm going to be talking about how to get from 1400 to 1800 rating in 2v2. So first I'll just show that yes, I am an 1800 player. I got that last week with my 2v2 partner who's a Holy Priest. And we're currently in the process of changing all our gear from 213 to 220. I just have the trinkets left to go to upgrade and then I'll be 221 is the item level that you'll sit at once you're full rival gear plus the 235 legendary. So you guys are probably wondering, you know, why why 1800? Is that even any good? Um, I'll put it into perspective here. So this um, article from 1st of March by Gibbs is just showing um, a sample size of where people are placed in arena. Uh, it's pretty. It's a pretty large sample size. I think it was 65,353 players. So it's a reasonable representation of um, the player base in arena. And you can see the median rating. So the middle rating is 1372. If you're above that, then you're better than 50% of players in 2v2. And then if you're 1800, then you fall into the you know the top percentile there, so you're in the top 10% of players. And so this guide's going to be, you know, all about taking you from a 1400 player, which you can see is the most common sort of range, and taking you all the way up to 1800 and above. And to do that, I'm going to be talking about um, arena targeting macros, um, focus target macros, all the different. Um, arena tracking so you need to track enemy cooldowns as well as your team's cooldowns and to do this I'm gonna be um, pretty much just running through my macros that I use on a hunter but this can apply to any class what they want to do but I'll run through how I've set it up and I need to actually hide my um, I need to hide my camera just so I can show I actually have additional bars down the bottom here and this is where I keep my focus targeting sort of macros. So I think altogether I have about 50 binds. If you take into consideration the arena targeting and then the arena focus targeting macros. So it is a fair amount of macros and it's going to be a, a fair bit for you to learn if you want to get to this sort of um, skill level. Uh, but you know if you're willing to learn and you're willing to just put in the time, uh, you will get there and you will be playing a lot more efficiently as a player. So the reason why you do focus macros and targeting macros as opposed to clicking is because it's just faster. So to give an example, if I set this target as a focus and this is my main target, if I need to say I want to CC this target, I might use a focus target on that to slow, jump over and then trap on top of it. While I, this whole time I've been targeting this target here for DPS. So I haven't switched at all. Or if I see I'm attacking this target, I'm, I'm lining up, I've got my rapid fire going. I'm running over here, I see on the nameplate just under there that they're casting a heal. Then I can interrupt while still attacking this target. Or if I need to scatter them, then I can just scatter. Uh, oh, well, I don't have that because I don't have war mode enabled. But yeah, in an arena, I'd be able to scatter them as well. So I can concussive shot, still attack the main target, put down my trap if I need to. Um, that's the sort of general idea of focus targeting. So you can keep your main target while trying to CC and interrupt that focus target. It's also just a good way to keep track of the cast bar. So I'll be giving an example of my arena gameplay and showing some of the things that I'm keeping an eye on when I do um, do arena as well. I'll go over the way I've set my keybinds up. So the main sort of spells I've got is Q, E, X is my interrupt. I have Scare Beast on Shift 2 if it's the target, so I put and basically what I've done is I've just gone, so I hold down Alt-Q, it's going to hit that target instead, or Alt-E, 
or Alt X, it's going to hit the focus target. Otherwise, if I do Q, it's just going to hit the main target. So that's a good way, you know, maybe if you want to put your interrupt on that, um, you can do it that way. The other way that you can also, um, if you don't, well, it's always good to go down like the focus target route because you want to keep track of one target as well. But another way you can create macros is for them to go off on a specific arena target. So you might have arena target one, arena target two, and arena target three. So this macro that I've got down here, scattershot, it's going to target arena one and then cast scattershot. So I only need to press that which is key bound to one. So when I press one, it's gonna target arena target one and scatter. And if I press two, it's gonna target arena target two and scatter. It's not gonna switch off of my main target though. It's just gonna do it automatically. And um, so that's the benefit of that one there. So now I'm just gonna give, um, just gonna show a little bit of my gameplay so I can turn this back on now to demonstrate some of the things that I'm keeping track of when I'm doing arena. So this is an example of an arena match I had. We were running with a um, 23k warrior. Just um, It's an in real life friend, so we're just trying to help him out a little bit. Um, but basically what I've done, so I'll pause at the start. I've set the priest as my focus target and I'm going to be going the Windwalker Monk as my main target. So to set, I have my focus targets set up as if I do Alt 1, it's going to set the top arena target as a focus target, Alt 2 and Alt 3. And then I have to target them, I have on my mouse the 12, 11, 10 of the MMO mouse to target as well. So that's how I've got my specific keybind set up. You may want to do something similar or different, um, but really it just depends uh, what works best for you. So I started with a trap and um, sometimes it bugs out and lands on the pillar. You can see that's what happened there. Um, yeah, I've had a, it's a little bit of a slow open here, actually quite bad, um, but I'm holding my burst for the right time. And our warrior, he's still trying to learn the game again. He's been on a bit of a break and he's only come back. So he ends up lying of sighting our healer because our healer gets knocked off and gets mind games and then dies. So it's a 2v3 from here on. And because we've had a fair bit of experience in twos and we've now got 1,800, I think this game is only 1,600 MMR. So we decided we'd just stick at it and see if we can win anyway. Um, but some of the things you'll notice I do is I've got, um, you can see that blue arrow above the priest's head. That um, signifies that he's my focus target. So just over there, focus target, this is my main target. And then it also has a one or a, like it's got numbers. That's my um, specific nameplates. I've set that up. So then I know that's arena target one. This is arena target two, and this is arena target three, which you can see arena target one, two, three. Now I'm going to talk about also tracking cooldowns. So you can see I've got my cooldown tracking right next to the specific player. So we can see trinkets here with Gladius. You can see the dispels as well. This is kind of handy if you're trying to, if you're playing a priest, for example, and you've you want to put your mind games on a target. You watch for the healer to have dispel on cooldown and then they can't dispel off the mind games. Um, so that's one thing you might want to be tracking as a priest. I can see pain suppression, power infusions being used. We've got the karma, we've got the convoke, bark skin, stun, um, and uh, tiger's lust as well. In terms of our cooldowns, I can see that uh, the priest, uh, my priest has used his serenities, but he still has his chest dice. <coughs> He's got his fade. Uh, his AOE heal and his guardian spirit and well our warrior is dead but um, yeah he used those cooldowns before he died um, so yeah that's how I keep track of cooldowns and it's a good way to sort of know when is the right time to burst as well so I'm just going to let this play out and I'll keep talking along the way so you know using those explosive shots when you can you'll see here I get a trap on there 
priest, but he deathed the trap. So often when you play at higher ratings, they will preempt that you're going to trap and they will use the death move, which makes them take damage after a second or something like that. So sometimes you'll want to fake that. Other times, um, yeah, other times you can just get it off on them and they'll, they won't realize. Um, but you can see, I, if you saw earlier, I did get a silence on the healer. So he didn't death that trap, so he has to sit, and I'm going to be bursting the monk now. But I got cycloned, and then I tried chasing him down. and Yeah, so this was a bit of a fail. We kind of know at this point that, um, yeah, that burst didn't really work. So we're going to just survive for our next burst cooldowns. I've got my true shot and my double tap up in 40 seconds, as well as resonating arrow. Um, so I just, you know, buying time as much as possible, knocking him off. Um, yeah, so you can see I put the slow on. He does his death, but I wait a little bit before using my trap, so then he can't get himself knocked out of that that time. Um, so I'm just calling to my priest that, you know, just survive 20 seconds. 20 seconds is all we need, and um, we'll have another go. And so he's, yep, there trying to survive. And, yep, that was a pretty good grip. I can see that he's popped power infusion. Like the priests pop power infusion on their monk, so they're doing a fair amount of DPS. And I get the trap off. I've got disarmed, but I know that I'm in a good spot. So I call for power infusion, which our priest puts on. I get my resonating arrow off. His line of sight is healer, and then easy kill like that. And because I still have my burst up, and my priest has mind games, we can also get the, the druid there in one easy sort of uh, swoop, I suppose. But yeah, that's sort of an example of in-game play, like what sort of things you're trying to track, what sort of things you're looking out for. Um, yeah, it's all, a lot of your goes are going to be revolved around cooldowns. You're going to see opportunities for kills. So like right now, I'm a bit susceptible. I've got 40 seconds on my turtle to come back up. I still have exhilaration, um, feign death, some of my defensives, but um, yeah, that's sort of what you are looking for. If I see, oh, pain suppression's down, um, fear, you know, if the karma gets used, all that, we're keeping track of that. We're looking for, does a player go line of sight? Can, is there a kill opportunity there? And we can CC the healer in a bad position. Um, So yeah, now just coming back to the game, I'll talk a little bit about those add-ons. So I've got Ability Team Tracker, that's the one to track all of the spells for the people on my team, and you can move that next to your raid profile. And then to track the enemy, I set up three Omni Bars, so one for each arena target, and that's tracking all of the um, spells that I highlight to track. So anything I want to know about, that's what I'm tracking in here. So you can customize, just go through, look at all their spells, learn them, learn what they do, and then also choose the ones which you think you want to keep track of. So like Demon Hunter is a class I've never played before, but I just look at his spells. I know this is a defensive spell. They've got Blur, 50% dodge for 10 seconds on a one minute cooldown. Um, this is their Interrupt. This is their Stun. They have Darkness on a 3 minute cooldown, I could be tracking that as well. Uh, Chaos Nova, this is another one of their stuns. And then they've got Imprison as well, so that's pretty much that sort of stuff that I'm tracking. Tracking some of the stuns, uh, the Renewal, the Bark Skin. don't really track Thorns, it's pretty obvious when they use that. And, um, that's not too big of a deal. Berserk, if it's a Feral, I need to know when he's bursting as well as well as survival instincts because you don't really want to be um, trying to burst them when they've got survival instincts up for those six seconds and yeah incarnation so uh, that's pretty much everything in terms of the add-ons and then the focus target macros the one thing I just show you is where to find the arena targeting macros so you set these up in keybinds targeting and just scroll down. So you see here that I mentioned before my arena targeting macros. 
So I've got it set up on the mouse here, 12, 11, 10, and then focus target, I've got Alt-1, Alt-2, and Alt-3. And um, yeah, so all together, it really is a bit of time to learn all of that. But if you're willing to put in the time and start using those focus target macros, you're going to find you're just much, much more efficient on your gameplay. You're going to be able to CC targets a lot faster. Um, to start off and to, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. Take it easy, like, don't have high expectations that you're going to learn this focus target macro stuff really quickly. But to start off, I would suggest just at the start of the arena, to say you have the same uh, keybinds as me, you'll press Alt 1, 2, or 3 to choose your focus target, and then you will choose your main target to kill. And if you can just get into the habit of doing that, you don't have to, like, later on you'll switch focus targets in the match depending on who you want to focus, but to start off with, you probably just want to have one main focus, usually the healer, because that's quite commonly the CC target. The other thing I'll just touch on is um, composition, so you're going to have a better chance at getting a higher rating if you're playing a better composition. So you can play a meme composition, but you may, you know, most of the time you won't find you'll get past 1600 unless you play like something semi-decent like you know rogue mage or um hunter priest hunter druid um, like healers or warrior pally is quite common windwalker uh, holy pally like you'll just see those specific twos teams and then as for threes you really need a healer like <laughs> I don't think there's any high triple DPS teams that I've seen, or at least even in the AWC, nobody runs triple DPS. It's a healer just has a lot of cooldowns that are defensive, that are going to help you survive uh, all the goes. And what you're trying to think about as a DPS player is, I need to get through this many of the healer's cooldowns before I can get a kill. That's you know, in the lower ratings, you're like, I'm going to one-shot some guy, because you will. You will come in, you'll have your stealth, you'll do your binding shot, you'll do your resonating arrow, your explosive shot, your true shot, and your rapid fire, and then, you know, you'll get that, and you'll one-shot somebody straight up. And it really doesn't require that much skill, but when you get to the higher ratings, you really need to start thinking, I need to work through this many cooldowns before I can get a kill opportunity. And, um... And at the same time, you need to hold your cooldowns for as long as possible, as well as monitor your team's cooldowns to see when they're using... Like, you don't want to overlap two things. Like, if if I turtle and the uh, Holy Pally uses Ultimate Sacrifice on me at the same time, we've just given them two cooldowns for one of their goes on us, which is um, really bad, which is why communication is... Um, super important going from 1400 to 1800 and um, yeah that's about it guys I I think I'll wrap it up there and um, give it a go see if you know <laughs> it's a bit to learn and it took me a bit of time to get into the rhythm of it but I definitely find that having focus target and arena targeting keybinds is really helpful it's going to up your game it's going to make you go from being 50% better than like being better than 50% of players to being better than 90% of players and um, you know most people want to be good at this game if you if you're playing the game you, you don't really want to just be an average player like you want to be better so I hope this helps you improve your game. I know that most of the professional players are doing this, so you may as well, if, if you want to head down that pathway, then just start implementing this into your gameplay. It's going to make you worse for a little bit, but in the long run, you're going to become better as a player. Anyway, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow more of my videos, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya. Dispel. Dispel. Yeah. Go for it. Oh my oh, god! Nice. <laughs> Please. <laughs>
Yes. We did it. Let's we fucking did it. go. <laughs> yeah. Let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Hell yeah. I live, I die, I queue again. <laughs>